This is phenomenal. This is the greatest long jump competition ever staged. Unbelievable. Going to the competition, you know, I was, I've been chasing Carl for eight years. And when I first started competing against him, he was beating me by like 50 centimeters. And the, and the last competition before the world championships, he beat me by one centimeter on his last jump. Mike Powell, who came so close to beating Carl Lewis earlier this year at the TAC championships. But Carl Lewis, ever the competitor, came back on the very last jump to win it unbeaten since 1981. So I knew that I was closing the gap and I felt like at the World Championship that was going to be my opportunity, you know, to, to finally beat him. You know, a couple days before the uh, championship started, Carl broke the world record, you know, in the in the 100 meters. And of course, being speed is one of the most in key, uh, important ingredients in jumping far. So I knew that he was ready to break a world record. So in my mind, I knew that in order for me to win, I was going to have to be prepared to try to, to break a world record in order to win. I felt special when I, for the first time I stepped on the track in the uh, couple of days prior to the competition because it was really, really fast. It was it was a hard but bouncy surface. I felt I felt so fast. I said, man, put me in the 100 meters, man. I know I can run fast on this track. So it was it was a great surface for me. And then, um, you know, people were complaining about the weather. The conditions pretty awful here. High humidity, sticky conditions, the wind beginning to blow very strongly behind the jumpers. It could, of course, boost the performances a very long way. But the jumpers will have to be very careful about their run-ups because it will take them up to the board much quicker than they used to. And they may have some problems. But to me, it was perfect because it was, uh, you know, it was a typhoon that was supposed to be coming in. So it was like, you know, it was really, really muggy. And there was like, you know, it was the kind of weather where like at any moment there would be a lightning strike with like no rain around. So with like ions in the air. So it was like filled with electricity. So to me, it was perfect. That's, and actually the same kind of weather that happened when Bob Beamer broke the world record. I was thinking, OK, I'm going for the world record. That's all I was thinking about. Prior to the competition, days leading up, I was just visualizing breaking the world record. And I knew that Carl was going to be going for it. You know, Carl always starts off competition strong. All eyes are on this supreme athlete, the world champion of 1983 and 1987, at this event. At this event alone, he's one of the greatest athletes of all time, unbeaten since 1981. And of course, he's a great sprinter to boot. He, he's very consistent with his jump. So when he jumped 868, I wasn't surprised at all. Actually, I thought he might jump a little further. And, um, you know, we are different because Carl would jump consistently far all day. And for me, I was just like, okay, I got six attempts to get one good one. So, you know, most times in competitions, I started off a lot slower and I had to figure figure things out, figure my step out. Whereas Carl, most times would have six fair jumps and he would jump very far. So for me, it wasn't surprising at all. 65 successive long jump wins he's had. And it's a very big leap. It's eight meters 68, the best in the world this year. Carl, one of the big favorites in the long jump, won 13 out of 14 competitions this year, the one defeat being to Carl Lewis himself. Well, my, my first jump was 785, which was horrible. And because I was trying to break the world record on the first jump, so I was pressing really hard. And then after that, so okay, you know, calm down. Let's just go back to your normal stuff and get a good jump in. Mike Powell reckoned the man most likely to challenge Carl for the gold medal. Got off a very disappointing opening jump of 7 meters 85. So the second jump, you know, I kind of took it kind of easy. I wanted to get a good jump in, a fair jump. And so in my mind, I thought, ah, that's probably about maybe 825, maybe 830. And they said 854. And I was like, oh, yeah. I said, if that's 854, I know I'm going far today. So I was really excited at that point because I knew I had a lot more to go. Mike Powell's distance, 8 meters 54, right up into second place. I was talking to my coach, Randy Huntington. So we would just, you know, he could see what I was doing in my approach and give me suggestions on what I should do as far as moving and, and different things to focus in on. So I always at competition will look up at him to see, to get his advice. Carl Lewis at uh, the top of world sprinting and of world jump long jumping for 12 seasons now. And he seems to be in the best form of his life.
Carl was like I said, I knew he's gonna jump far. And when I, when you hear the crowd yell like that, I just went to look and say, okay, did he do it? Is that it? Is that is, did he get the record? You know, and then I'm looking to see what the wind was like too to make sure that it wasn't legal or not. So you know, sitting there on the field, you could see the big screen. So you had a kind of idea about how far it was. So I thought to myself, ah, that's far, but I don't think it's quite a world record though. But you know, he was he was definitely let it be known that he was going for it though. And I, I think this jump was uh, eight meters eighty three. I think it was. So um, he was yeah, he was well on his way to doing what you know he came here to do. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, it's about that time for you to get it together and start closing that gap. Okay, I believe that this is the the fourth round jump, and and Carl has great speed, and I can always tell by his responses how far it was. And I think that you can see right there, he's thinking, okay, is that it? Is that going to be it? And the first thing he did was look at the wind gauge and it's like, ah, the wind was like 2.9. So he knew it wasn't going to be a record, but I was looking up at the video and I knew that it was going to be over 883. And, um, you know, the mark comes up and it's eight meters, 91. And he pumps his fist to the crowd and he jogged past me, pumping his fist going, yeah, that's right, that's right. And at that moment, I was so angry. I just felt, I wanted to get up and like punch him. I wanted to get up and fight him because that's how I, yeah, he was like my enemy at the time. So to me, I just I just took it personally. And I, I had the feeling like I just wanted to get into a fight. So once he did that, I said, okay, now we're about to get it going now. Let's start, let's start now, I'm ready to go. And I don't want to wait till my last jump to really get it going. But I was so fired up from his response to his jump because I just took it personally that he was like letting me know like that's it. And so I was like I said I was just I was angry. My adrenaline was so so high. Bump jump, Mike Powell. Well, I was going through my visualization and I never saw it more clearly. So I just thought to myself, go, start going. And then I had a great jump, got a lot of air time. And then the crowd let me know how far it was because they were just screaming. I could hear people saying world record and it was, was so loud in the stadium and it just felt good. I hit it, it was a really good jump. You know, my approach wasn't perfect, but I got a chance to get a lot of good height and I just knew that I jumped past him. And so, you know, I was just sitting there just waiting for the measurement to come up. I was really happy because I saw that the wind was 0.3. And it seemed like it took a long time for the mark to come up and they came up slowly at one time it was like 8.95. <laughs> I'll never get that. I was so, so happy running down the track. I'm like, yes, I got it. I finally got the record. I got the record. I was and the crowd was just yelling and I was just kind of celebrating and running around. And thinking to myself, that's right, I got him. I, well, I didn't know I think I got him, but I got the record, you know. So um, I was super, super excited, pumping my pump my my fist, you know, to the crowd because they were just constantly cheering. And then right afterwards, after the jump, my friend from Australia, David Covert, he came to said, Mike. I said, what? Because Carl's got two jumps left. I was like, oh crap, that's right. So I had to calm down and then wait and then watch him take two more attempts at trying to break the record. It may not be the end of the story yet. No competition before two men have ever jumped anything remotely like this. There's Powell watching for the great Carl Lewis. Well, his series in the long jump, he started with 8.68. He then had a massive no jump. He then did a wind assisted 8.83. He then did a wind assisted 8.91, the greatest long jump in history and it's been passed. Carl Lewis, the greatest athlete of our time, perhaps the greatest athlete of all time, facing even his greatest challenge ever. And Powell, of course, will remember that Lewis did it with the last jump in the US Championships. The buzz is growing around this stadium. Look at that! Well, whatever, what a response! It's close to nine meters yet again. This was after Carl's last jump, and I could see that it wasn't quite far enough, and but I had to make sure. Uh, and then at that moment, I knew that I beat him. I, I finally beat him, and I was just so happy. I just started running, and I was running towards you. I don't know where I was running to, and I got to the runway. 
the official way I called one of my jump to foul earlier, I just picked him up and hugged him. And you know, for the Japanese, that's like, you know, so much out of their their culture. B was like surprised that I did that. But I was so excited, I just wanted to celebrate and just hug somebody. And um, after that, and then Carl came down to congratulate me. And after after the, the competition in New York, when I finished the competition, he beat me. He put his arm around me and walked me down the track and saying, okay, you know, that was great competition and stuff. So after that, after that last jump, he came up to me and I put my arm around him, walked him down the track saying, yeah, yeah, you're a great competitor. <laughs> so I got him back for that, you know? So it was just, you know, for me, it was just a culmination of everything in my life that had gone wrong with me for, for every time somebody called me a peanut head or every, any girl who ever turned me down for a date or anybody ever doubted me, that jump was for them to say like, uh, take that. So it was way bigger than just a competition for me. It was me against everything that happened in my life and against everything that was going negative against me in the world and letting people know that I'm making my stand, I'm making my mark now. So it's, it was much more than a jump for me. It was just a turning point in my life.